a clockwise spiral or an anti-clockwise spiral. So that the effect of this was when it emerged to, at the surface, the log was always pushed away from the bend. So that the logs passing down this flume never touched the sides. The flume was therefore never damaged in its use and nor were the logs and they arrived in absolutely impeccable condition. And on the first day that it was used, one of the criteria which determined whether Victor was to be paid or not is whether the flume would deliver a thousand solid cubic meters of timber in one day. Uh, in the first day of operation, it delivered 1,600 cubic meters of timber and Victor Schauberger was paid. And everybody else, all the, all the experts were furious at the success of this because it showed that somewhere in their hydraulic theory there was a great error, a great misunderstanding of water. And Victor used to say in this regard, how can you possibly understand how water, a living substance, uh, can behave when the only place you test it in is in laboratories instead of out in nature? where then water acts in, in, in relation to nature's laws and not the laws that you have contrived in your places of research. The Victor constructed a reservoir of water at the top, at the head of the flume. And when the time came for opening, on the opening day, uh, the experts arrived and saw the construction of this, this basin, holding basin, and said that it was too far too flimsy, it certainly couldn't withstand the pressure of the water and so on. And Victor gave them no answer and went down and stood right in the middle of the wall opposite where the water was going to flow in. And then he gave the signal by firing two shots of his carbine to signal to allow the water to rush in, which it did with tremendous force and volume. And Victor said to the people who were gesticulating, say, come back, you're going to be killed. He said, it, what does it matter? If I'm a fool, then I'm going to be swept away, and so will my theories at the same time. But I believe in what I'm doing. And so he stood looking over the wall, watching this w water flow in. And the water actually flowed in around the sides of this egg-shaped basin. And when they converged at the far end, then they produced a counter wave, which moved back in the direction of the inflowing water, which was in this instance about four meters high, full of mud and rocks and things, and therefore exerted a counter pressure against the incoming water and the egg-shaped holding basin held. And the experts were absolutely dumbfounded. Why should it have done this? And they then asked him, where did you get the idea for this basin? And Victor said, said well, a common chicken told me how to do it. And finally, when uh, they calculated the strength of the wall statically, uh, they were found to be 12 times stronger than they need have been in order to resist the inflow of water and to be able to support the basin, uh, the sides of the basin, when it was full. So this log flume is an example of how we might construct systems for moving water where there is a continual alternation of movement, of swaying movement, with different vortical flows, so that the water is able to regenerate itself and to cool itself. Preferably, these should be enclosed, so that there is also no access to, to the water from the sun and uh, from, from extra too, too much heat. They timed a block of wood flowing from the holding basin down to the mill in the early morning, when the water temperatures were about 8 or 9 degrees and it took 29 minutes to cover the distance. Later in the afternoon they got the same block of wood over the same distance and the water temperature had by this time risen to about 14 or 15 degrees and the wood, block of wood took 40 minutes to cover the distance. So that it shows that with increasing heat water flows more slowly so this process was employed in his log flumes and it is a basis by which we could redesign any new water conduits which have to be constructed in this country. There are other systems which probably could be used to improve uh, what is there already and that is the uh, building in or incorporation of veins in, so we say, an open channel which would cause the, the water to rotate as soon as it hit, it hit them, that it would make the water rotate or make a double spiral movement 
um, down the center of the channel, which would again allow water at least to breathe and, and reoxygenate itself and to cool itself to a certain extent. But this, the, the flowing in straight trapezoid channels, which is the general system of moving water according to modern hydraulic theory, um, physically kills water until what arrives at the other end, the point of use, is virtually a water corpse, apart from the fact that uh, it's also been chlorinated and uh, the chlorine, while it does remove bacteria and other sort of unwelcome organisms, uh, will also finally s sterilize the blood from people, of people who drink it all the time. Um, and research has shown that 18% uh, percent, percent of bladder cancers and 9% of um, intestinal cancers have been caused by, or rectal cancers, have been caused by the consumption of chlorinated water. So when we drink chlorinated water, we actually uh, harm our immune system and we drag it down to a level where it's more likely to fall, the, the body is more likely to fall victim to disease. Uh, so there's a great, there's, it's very important um, to begin to Im employ systems or to convert existing systems into ways of water, of moving water, which follows the law of uh, governing the flow of water, takes temperature into consideration, takes the, the alternating pulsating movement of water into consideration because this is a substance which is a living substance and it cannot impart life unless it is itself alive. So as something alive we have to make sure that whatever system and whatever materials we choose to reticulate it allows water to breathe. In 1938, in Nuremberg, Victor Schauberger re-examined Lord Kelvin's water drop experiment to determine the static charge in falling water. Uh, Victor wanted to demonstrate uh, that water does, in its falling, generate charges. This is a device. The arrangement of it was first um, designed by Lord Kelvin about 1880-85. Um, and he called it his influence machine because it uh, demonstrated the influences of fields. In this instance, static fields and positive and negative fields. Water is supplied through this vertical pipe here, splits, and then comes down, pointing downwards, and ends up with a a very, very fine, the finest hypodermic needle at the end, so that the water jet coming out of this is as fine a jet as you can get. Inside this cylinder is a cylinder of brass in order to collect the charge, which is falling from here. So this cylinder is coated on the outside with paraffin wax to isolate it so that the charge doesn't leak outwards from it. This is the same cylinder. And this diagonal here is a copper rod, which is attached to the brass here, and also attached to a strip of brass in the bottom of this receiving vessel. So the charge here is the same as the charge here. And when the water falls through, it generates either a positive or negative charge here, and the charge is reversed by the time it hits the bottom. And so a charge builds up here, let's say positive, and here negative. And according to Kelvin, <coughs> the build-up of the charge is unlimited. And over each of these, or between all this arrangement, you get a, a negative static field builds up on this side, and a positive static field builds up on this side, which can theoretically go to infinity. From each of these cylinders, there is a black cable, which is a high-tension cable. And these uh, can be used to bring the charged field to where you want to use it. For instance, on the neon tube. Uh, 
and on the electroscope to demonstrate the charge in falling water. The charge is transferred to the inside of this, causing the foils of the electroscope to flap. There's a charge which is transferred inside without even me touching it. And if I touch it, then it's quite strong, and it'll go on flapping like this. And as Victor Schauberger said, very good quality water would cause this to flap 150 times before it ceased doing so. And the lower the quality of the water, the fewer times it would flap. A water molecule is a dipole molecule. That means it has a positive and negative charge at each end of the molecule. And when it falls, it generates a charge because it spins. And so it generates both an electric field and a magnetic field. And this is why, with a full distance of maybe two kilometers or a kilometer, uh, when rain falls onto the ground, it comes with an enormous charge in it. And this charge is imparted directly into the plant when uh, the rain hits the plant's leaves, which is why rainfall is much more productive than irrigation water. These very small thin jets of water falling out of these hypodermic needles generates a charge. It's really a, a small thunderstorm, this machine, because it demonstrates that in the clouds, charges are generated by falling water, which eventually ends up in the discharge of lightning. So in the thunderstorm, very powerful positive and very powerful negative fields develop and they short circuit through a, a lightning strike. The water falling through here develops a charge and as like charge repel each other then at the bottom this jet starts to spread out sideways and the water will actually start coming up again and then going down again so in this movement you can begin to see why there are such strong up and down drafts in thunderstorms. And this, of course, is a very, very small scale. And I have, using this device, generated a spark which will jump across a distance of two centimeters. Every millimeter jumped represents 2,000 volts. So the two centimeters that I achieved with this device represents 40,000 volt discharge. I can only say if you happen to hang on to it yourself, you really jump. There seemed to be a correlation between altitude and the length of the spark gap. There also may be other variables such as air humidity and air temperature as well. The idea is to create an implosive turbine where the water is moved from the outside inwards instead of the inside outwards, which is what's happening with all conventional propellers. Think in three dimensions in a very complex geometrical system which can't be described by the straight line, circle and point. <laughs>